Good evening and welcome to Wealth Creation Through Industrialization. I am Hadiza Olao Shibikon. On this week's edition of the program, we shall be featuring the highlight of the recent validation workshop on the midterm evaluation of the cotton, textile and garment scheme. Kindly recall that in 2010, the federal government of Nigeria launched a 100 billion naira cotton, textile and garment revival fund to resuscitate and upgrade the entire cotton, textile and garment sector value chain. All stakeholders across the CTG value chain and labor leaders and officials of the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, who were present at the workshop, commended the Bank of Industries efficient and effective management of the scheme that most beneficiaries confirmed had impacted positively on their operations. Happy viewing. Having implemented the Cotton Textile and Garment Fund for about two years since 2010, the Bank of Industry instituted an independent mid-term evaluation on the performance of the fund for both the bank and the beneficiaries. The purpose of this evaluation is to ascertain the extent to which the scheme has met its initial aim and objectives. This is coming shortly after the Minister of Trade and Investment, Dr. Olushe Guaganga, visited some industries in Kano, where he met stakeholders with a promise to look into their challenges. I recall that I was in Kano uh, recently, and uh, based on the interaction, it is clear that the money that has been made available has been put to work. I could see it. I could, the evidence was there. But I also I heard from you that you needed more support in terms of the duration of the loan uh, because of what is happening in some parts of the country. Uh, that we have heard, that we are working on, that we have um, commenced action on. The managing director of the Bank of Industry, Ms. Evelyn Oputu, disclosed that over 60% of the fund has been disbursed so far. It is with pride and great pleasure that I announce to you that of the 100 billion that was actually uh, given to Bank of Industry, we have disbursed more than nearly 60% of it to some of you who are here. And the approach that we took was that it is not just the textile mills that would be actually affected. One of the most, apart from the textile mills themselves, we went to cotton production because cotton production was one of the challenges and constraints that you had that was affecting us, quite apart from the smuggling, which we, I won't talk about here. Then the way we handle cotton, the way we handle the raw produ pro produce itself, the ginning process, all of that, we have lent funds to all of you. Then we looked at what actually happens all over the world where the greatest impact has been has been in the garment impact. And Nigeria has no garmenting industry at all. We wanted to be able to bring that back and resuscitate it. So we have actually started also garmenting, which is an arm of, of, of the value chain that we usually do not pay too much attention to. We're still working on it. It's still a work in progress. We've had more small SMEs in that space. We're hoping that we will have a large, big ticket uh, manufacturer come work with us in this particular space. Until we get that, we will not relent. It is with your effort that the 100 billion came. We want to be able to go forward, look at a common facility center that is in any, space, in any country that is taking this industry seriously. We're going to go the whole nine yards with you, but it has to come from you. You have to be enthusiastic, you have to be passionate. It's not just about money, it is about livelihood, it's about national pride. The country representative of United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, Patrick Kurmawa, identified the lack of adequate machinery and skilled manpower as one of the major challenges. We need to improve on the skills that are needed. When I talk to the industrialists, Apart from power, the second most important problem, they tell me, is the right skills for them to, uh, to have to, uh, to improve their productivity. On our part, UNIDO, we have also been working very closely with the Bank of Industry in the implementation of that program and also in setting up 
the Common Facility Center as a model for revitalizing the sector in Nigeria. And I would like to congratulate the Bank of Industry for subjecting themselves to be looked into by independent group to see how they are managing the fund and also how those who are receiving the fund perceive the benefit of that fund. The General Secretary, National Union of Textile Garments and Tailoring Workers, Isa Aremo, commended the federal government for the intervention while going down memory lane. We can see what two years of concrete action I tried to put in place. I bear witness also that, as my colleagues from the manufacturer side have said, I bear witness that this intervention fund has done a very wonderful uh, job in saving our industry. Not only that, even reviving some of them that have closed down. I felt extremely quite excited in 2010 when we all moved to Nasarawa to reopen UNTL in Kaduna. Uh, and that was a very historic moment because when that industry closed down in 2007, I mean, we virtually gave up to say that textile industry cannot come back again because that was the largest textile mill. But due to this intervention fund, ably channel and managed by back of industry. In 2010, that factory reopened. And at the first initial opening, it employed direct jobs of 1,200 to 5,000 jobs. And I think we need to commend this effort, this initiative. Uh, not only that, I think I also bear witness that Supertex is almost coming on board. Uh, and I think we need to accelerate this process to find out that, I mean, to, to, to see that we, we, we continue in this gradual way to bring back the industry, as the case may be. Other stakeholders present had this to say about the Bank of Industry, who are the managers of the fund. A lot has been achieved through the singular dedication of the Bank of Industry in the Cutting Textile Garment Fund. For so many years, through our public policy advocacy activities, we have urged government to try to look at the plight of this industrial grouping. But we are pleased that with the intervention of government through the BOI, the, the beautiful relationship and, and dedication BOI brought into the scheme, things are beginning to look good. Not only did BOI provide the funding, BOI has continued to assist us as an association to strengthen our capacity for public policy advocacy. And also thank the MDCU that whenever we have issues bordering on our existing relationship between our members and the bank, the, member, the bank always has given us a listening ear. And today we are gathered to evaluate what has been achieved so far? Actually, I wish to thank uh, the BY for their immense efforts in seeing to it that the uh, livelihood of the farmer is uplifted in Nigeria, particularly cotton farmers. All of us can confirm that in BY, you don't need to give bribe to anybody. You don't need to fear anything from BOI. If you have your papers correct, you are sure to get your money. So it is one bank that is exemplary in this country that you don't need to bribe anybody before you get your money. So on that note, I really want to thank the BOI for being exemplary here. And I also want to thank the BOI for sponsoring our capacity building uh, endeavors in the cotton industry. Because cotton is a very sensitive product and can easily be contaminated. By the time you send it abroad to the international market, they can return it to you that it is contaminated. And you lose everything from beginning to, end, to the end. So uh, the bank has been trying its best to uh, really sensitize our farmers and train them to ensure that the cotton they are producing are not contaminated.
An independent review of the implementation of the scheme was carried out by Fairways Resources Enterprises Limited in collaboration with United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, through random sampling of 21 of the beneficiaries. One of the things that we were asked to was to look at the operating capacity of this thing. Has the phone, does the phone have any impact on this? We discovered that um, actually the CTG intervention phone appears to have had some effect on the regulation phone. For example, before the intervention day, the hospitalization rate, there was a steady decline for two years from about 40 years to about 40% rate. After the injection of the phone, there was a slight movement to about 18% discovery or recovery. And uh, some of the success stories we heard, first hand information from the field, for example, the CEO of Crown Nation tells us that uh, the CTG fund, this is a direct quote from some of the beneficiaries, the, the CTG funds have has considered considerably in improving our capacity utilization. Before the intervention, we were producing between 200 and 500 cars per day. But this figure has doubled to about 700 to 1,000 cars per day. Further successes have been recorded since after the validation workshop in 2012. As a recipient of the CTG fund, I would say kudos to the CEO managing director of the Bank of Industry. She is doing a wonderful job. Because I, when I approached them for a loan, they didn't know me and I, I, I didn't know anybody there. But I, all they looked at was how viable is the business? How well are you managing it? And um, the moment I had all the, everything they wanted, or the moment I met all the criteria, my loan was granted. So I really say kudos to them. And I also want to assure everybody that gone are the days in Nigeria when you will say, oh, I have no connection. Because I have no connection, I can't get things done. It's no longer like that. It's really on merit. At least at the Bank of Industry, I would say that. They've um, always been partners in progress with us because uh, we have a group of garment factories. We are also the uh, promoters of Sam and Sarah, um, the one you usually see on Lagos about the Express Road. And the Bank of Industry, um, they've, also, they, they've always been at hand to help us every time you know, we need um, 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 financial assistance for our equipment. This hat, which I hope sells very well, and all Nigerians should be proud of. With the interjection of the Cutting Textile and Garment Fund from the Bank of Industry, BOI, our annual production capacity currently stands at 1.2 million, whilst creating direct jobs for 62 persons, that's 62 workers in the employ of the company. Most of the time we complain as Nigerian citizens that things are not going well but we always fail to remember that the changes will only occur when we take pride in ourselves and in what we do. Garmenting representing where CNNL plays. I'm very happy to be associated with this company and I urge any one of you who can better her to call on the Bank of Industry. We're there for you. 
as at March 2014, loan approval were made to 77 beneficiaries, of which disbursement have been made to 60 so far across the nation. Before the intervention, the capacity utilization rate had declined to under 40%, but moved up to about 61.16% by June 2012. Therefore, there was significant difference in the rate of capacity utilization by the beneficiary firms in the pre- and post-intervention periods. A total of about 8,070 jobs were saved. About 2,197 new jobs have been created. In addition to the new jobs created, about 1,275 workers that were previously laid off when the firms had not accessed the CTG fund have been recalled to their previous job position. About 11,500 workers are currently directly employed by the 21 sample CTG firms. From findings, it is therefore clear that the intervention fund substantially saved existing investment in the industry and created new investment also. In the last half hour, we brought you the validation workshop on the cotton, textile and garment industry scheme during which the achievements of the scheme were highlighted. They also identify some non-financial challenges facing industrialists in the CTG and preferred recommendations on how they could be overcome. In subsequent edition of the program, we will bring you progress reports and actions taken by relevant authorities on the recommendations that were made, especially in the light of the promise made by the Honorable Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment that 
there will be follow-up sessions and regular consultations with vital stakeholders in the CTG subsector. It is on this note that we'll draw the curtain on this week's edition of Wealth Creation Through Industrialization. I am Hadiza Olaoshibiko. Good evening and have an enterprising week. <music>